Good morning and welcome to Amble once again. The mornings, even when they're fine and sunny, have just got that little bit of a sharp edge to them nowadays. Autumn's just around the corner and the seasons are changing. What would we talk about if we hadn't got the weather? Traditionally at this time of year, the church celebrates Harvest Festival. Although the harvest of grain has been safely gathered in for a long time now, and we benefit from harvests all around the world, from the whole year along. But it's good, isn't it, to set aside a time to remember the goodness of God in providing for us. This year, the Church of England has set aside this time of the year for a week called the Season of Generosity. And we're keeping this season at St Cuthbert's this week and beginning today. So in our worship today, we'll remember the generosity of God towards us and how we hope to reflect his generosity in our attitudes to others. The reading's a familiar one. In it, Jesus re reflects on God's generosity in his creation and the way that he takes care of the smallest and the most insignificant of the creatures and plants. He makes them beautiful as well as useful and so too he takes care of us. It has those familiar words in, consider the lilies of the field. As a small child, I used to picture in my head a field of those big white lilies that you only ever saw at Easter and at funerals. And I was very pleased to find out that the lilies of the field was really another way of talking about wildflowers. So the poppies at the start of our worship remind us about that and they also remind us in the words of the hymn that Jesus is Lord. Before Jill reads our Bible reading to us, we have a prayer. Generous God, we come to you today as your grateful children with thanksgiving for all you've done for us, conscious of all the good gifts around us. Help us to remember your goodness and may it lead us out into generous giving for others. As we thank you for the gifts you give to us, help us to remember the greatest gift of all, Jesus the one who gave his life a ransom, setting us free from all that stops us, relating more closely to you, our Father, giving us the right to be called children of God. We thank you once again, in Jesus' name. Amen. A reading from Matthew chapter 6. I tell you, do not worry. Don't worry about your life and what you will eat or drink. And don't worry about your body and what you will wear. Isn't there more to life than eating? Aren't there more important things for the body than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They don't plant or gather crops. They don't put away crops in storerooms. But your Father who is in heaven feeds them. Aren't you worth much more than they are? Can you add even one hour to your life by worrying? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the wild flowers grow. They don't work or make clothing, but here is what I tell you. Not even Solomon in all his royal robes was dressed like one of these flowers. If that is how God dresses the wild grass, won't he dress you even better? Your faith is so small. After all, the grass is here only today. Tomorrow it is thrown into the fire. So don't worry. Don't say, what will we eat? Or what will we drink? Or what will we wear? People who are ungodly run after those things. Your Father who is in heaven knows that you need them. But put God's kingdom first. Do what he wants you to do. Then all those things will also be given to you. So don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has trouble enough of its own. So why? 
Why set aside time to think about God's generosity? And why think about our own generosity as well? Well, as you know, harvest is a traditional time for thanksgiving and the traditional harvest uh, that we often see in pictures of Victorian harvests uh, was a great time of great rejoicing. People had got the, uh, the crops in, everything was safely gathered in as the hymn says, and they were able to uh, relax slightly and they felt cushioned against hunger during the winter. We don't have to think like that, very many of us. We don't have to think about being cushioned against hunger. It isn't something that uh, worries us a great deal. But uh, in very many other parts of the world, obviously it does. And in the past, our ancestors uh, were often very concerned that they would go hungry over the winter. And so they were thanksgiving at this time of year. In that reading that Jill read to us, Jesus is teaching about a generous God. And that's a wonderful thing to think about, isn't it? How God is generous to us. He physically provides for us. And we think about that particularly as we gather in the food for the harvest and think about his way of, of looking after us in that kind of uh, sense. But also God provides for us in very many other ways as well. He provides for our emotional and our spiritual needs. And Jesus reminds us, especially when he talks about the wildflowers, that there is beauty in the world. I was just thinking the other day, God could have created a very boring world if he'd wanted to, I suppose. Uh, something like, uh, like a Minecraft picture, if you know what that is, or if you don't, Lego. <laughs> all squares and, and, and lumps and bumps and, and nothing interesting and of course no variation everything very much the same but God has created a world of variety a world with delicate things in it as I talk to you now I can see a butterfly going across uh, lovely beautiful things that he's created for no other reason than they should be beautiful the lilies of the field, as Jesus said, the wildflowers are beautiful, more beautiful than King Solomon, all dressed up in all his fine clothes. God provides for our needs of beauty, of uh, our emotions. But you might be saying it's all right talking about harvest and about giving thanks for what a generous God has given to us. But actually, there are a lot of people who don't have uh, what they should have, who are not going to, tonight to go to bed with full stomachs and who are not going to wake up to a good breakfast tomorrow morning. Not everyone has enough. Why? Well, there's one simple reason, isn't there? And that's greed. Greed for food, greed for land, greed for water as well as greed for money, but those things that are so essential to everybody are, are taken away by this greed. As you see, there is enough for everyone. Mahatma Gandhi said, there is enough for need, but not for greed. And so it's, we think about God's generosity, we also think about our own generosity how we live our lives in order that others may have enough to live on. God's generosity extends to giving us what we need for our bodies and for our minds and souls. It extends even further. Sometimes when someone has a need, we might send a present. If it's abroad, we might send money to help them. But what people often most of all want is a person and they want someone to come and help them. And God's generosity extends in that way to sending Jesus to be our friend, to be alongside us, to experience what we've experienced in the world and to teach us the way of God. So God actually sends us a person to be with us. It's, uh, it's very important that we think about that as we think about God's generosity and we don't forget he sent 
his only son into the world because, because he so loved us. That's why he sent. So there's our generosity and there's God's generosity. We live in a very generous community, a, a community that helps one another out and is noted for it. I was thinking particularly at the moment of the food bank which we have here and which the need for it will be greater as time goes on. I was thinking of the generosity of people giving to that uh, as we are able to see what people have given week by week. Faithfully people give to the, to the food bank, it's great. At St Cuthbert's we support a young man who lives in Kenya. Uh, he's, uh, he's about 15 years old and he's in education and we are able to pay for that for him. Because we have so much, we want to give to those who have less. So God's generosity spurs us on to the generosity of our own and to being generous people. Thank you for listening. Let us give thanks to God for his gifts so generously given to us, for recognising that all things come from you and remembering that we are stewards of your gifts, for wisely using the resources entrusted to us, for rejoicing in the beauty of creation, for the care of your world, for sharing the fruits of creation equally among all people. We ask for your blessing on our families, friends and neighbours and for those who are sick. We pray for those whose lives have been gathered into your presence, for all those known personally to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer.
and so a final blessing. May God, our generous Father, Jesus, our loving Saviour, and the Holy Spirit of Truth, bless each of us and keep us close, today and forevermore. Amen.